And hello, my fellow uh, music nerds. Um, obviously, I'm on a roll right now, and part of the reason why is around this time of the year, business gets really slow for me. Uh, usually, July, August, everybody goes on vacation. So, I'm making no money, but making videos. There you go. Uh, in any case, hang on one second, please. Okay. Uh, today I'm going to discuss a couple of things. Um, relative versus parallel practice of the pentatonic scales. And uh, secondly, neighborhood playing, how that relates, what that means. Um, so uh, what is relative practice and what is re uh, parallel practice? If we take the set of five pentatonics that I uploaded for you up on uh, the last video in the notes, um, you can think of uh, all of these uh, scale shapes. Now, we're, right now we're dealing with A minor, C major. Now, relative to each other, remember, these start on the scale steps. Wow, the alley is noisy today. Oh, that's a helicopter. Cool. Great, thanks, guys. All right, in any case, um, right now that's an A minor, but what if I was in B minor? Well, all, let, you have to gauge, like, okay, I moved up a whole step. So, therefore, all the other scale shapes that would have gone with A minor have to move a whole step up to accommodate B minor. I hope that's pretty simple. I hope that makes sense. I like to think of the um, prime, I call this the primary pentatonic, the number one pentatonic. I like to think of the primary pentatonic as like the... Uh, the uh, locomotive of a train and all the other trains are hooked to it and they follow. All right, so um, a good way to practice in relative would be to give you start with A minor and get all those down in your muscle memory and kind of get a general sense of the distances between each of the uh, scale shapes. And uh, now because it's so far up the neck, I would suggest you try practicing E minor. If you notice, I have to go all the way to the 12th fret for E minor. That's barring using the open string, so I must go to the 12th fret. We could think of the 12th fret like the open string, so the 13th fret is equivalent to the 1st fret, 14th to the 2nd, finally 15th to the 3rd. So now, my second shape that would have gone here is two way high up, so we'll take that down to the 3rd fret. So I get shape one, shape two, Shape three, shape four, and shape five. Now, if you don't have all the shapes memorized, what I would suggest is, rather than going in sequential order, is this gonna happen for my entire video? Uh, rather than uh, going in sequential order, Practice one, get, get shape one down, and then go to shape four, because if you notice, wow, who knows, maybe World War Three is beginning. If you notice, when I got to, in E minor, when I got to shape four, I was in a nice, comfortable place on the neck. I like around the seventh fret as a comfortable place to play, unless I'm going for some sort of effect, like really deep low notes or super high notes. But generally, I like this area. It's a nice range. And notice, uh, so if you if you memorize shape four, if let's say you're in F minor, well, that's kind of an uncomfortable place to play the scale. But if I go to shape four in F minor, I'm in a nice cozy place to play. So shape four is a good one to re uh, remember after shape one. Okay, so uh, that would be relative practice in the sense that you've changed keys and now you, you're doing all the scales of that key which again are the same five notes. What is parallel? The simple meaning of uh, relative and, and the simple meaning of parallel is this. Relative means within the key. So in other words, we have five notes of the pentatonic. When I change all my shapes, uh, when I move from shape to shape to shape within a key, it's still the same five notes. So it's related, they're all related together. Parallel simply means changing keys but I have a very specific way of practicing parallel with the pentatonic shapes. Uh, let's say we choose A minor at the fifth fret. Practicing in parallel is a music theory practice more than it is a muscle memory practice. 
Um, what you want to do is do all the shapes, but starting on the same fret. Now when you do that, you're changing the minor and major roots every time, or, or if you like to put it this way, you're changing keys every time you change the shape if you keep it on the same fret, all right? So uh, for example, shape one, of course, is A minor and C major. Those will work, this will work in the context where A minor is the root chord or C major is the root chord. Now in relative practice, I'd go up to the A fret and go to the next shape up. But what I'm gonna do is take that shape and bring it back to the fifth fret. And if you were to look on the chart I, I gave you, it's downloadable. Um, this is the major root, this is the minor root. So now I'm playing A major slash F sharp minor pentatonic. All right, if I go to the next shape, instead of going here, I'm staying on the fifth fret. And that gives me the E minor slash G major pentatonic. Uh, now, shape four would have been at the 12, but we're going to keep it on the fifth. And now when I do that shape in this position, here's my minor root, here's my major root. So I have D minor, F major in this context. And finally, and lastly, is if I take shape five, which is normally at the third fret, and I bring it up to the fifth, I get... Uh, Here's the minor root and the major root, B minor, D major, okay? Now, I gave you on the chart that the, I think it's the pink dot is where the minor root is and the blue dot is where the major root is. So, you can work your music theory chops when you recognize minor and major roots of each of the five shapes on starting on one fret. And by the way, you can keep practicing this if you get that one down. You can keep practicing this in other positions and you'll get other keys and other major minor roots. For example, this is B minor. If I do the same process on B minor, I'll wind up getting a whole different uh, other group of major and minor roots. Okay, so um, why, why use parallel? What, what is it good for? Well, first of all, relative works perfectly fine in the Greek modes because in the Greek modes, you're not key changing. You're, you're staying within the same key. There are no surprise chords coming in uh, that are uh, announcing other keys or drawn from other keys. Um, but when you get into the major minor key system and the blues, um, this becomes very relevant because the true, uh, uh, I'm gonna do a whole section on the third system, the blues. It's very involved, believe it or not. I mean, everything that's, that is becomes sophisticated and complex usually starts with basic building blocks. The blues seem simple, but it's very, very sophisticated once you begin to understand it through the certain conventions and see all the little clues that the blues set forth. Um, all right, so uh, parallel is gonna definitely become necessary in the major minor key system. And uh, I will go into that on my next video. Uh, but right now, uh, all right, first of all, I demonstrated to you how relative playing works in my last video. I had a chord progression. I played every one of the five scale shapes within that, uh, uh, that key, and everyone worked, everyone sounded the same. But there are certain situations uh, where you might wanna change the pentatonic scale to a different one, a different set of major minor roots. One uh, example I like to follow uh, is I've played the song Sultans of Swing for a number of years, and what happens on the last, uh, the chords for the last solo, it's D minor, yes, and you could get away globally with the D minor pentatonic, granted. So what I have is D minor, B flat, C, let's see, I have this pre-programmed in. Yeah, there it is. All right, so I have D minor, D minor, B flat, and then C. But notice how long it sits on the C chord. Now, all right, let me adjust my volume levels here so you can hear what I'm doing. Now, 
previously I could get away with D minor pentatonic throughout. fine, but if you were to examine Mark Knopfler's solo, for example, in the section, it's a different section of the song, but when he goes... That whole thing, this first part is from the D minor pentatonic. This next part is from the B flat major pentatonic, and notice I didn't have to change, when I change the scale and the roots, I didn't have to move out of position because I know how to bring the, the closest scale to, to where I'm working in that place, if that makes any sense at all. And finally, when he goes, right, he's uh, now going to the C major, pentaton uh, C major pentatonic. Now I find I'm a little sensitive when it comes to certain uh, notes against chords and there there is a little bit of dissonance that happens on on that c chord here it is you can hear one resolve down the half step well that note is not in the d minor pentatonic so what i like to do when i'm soloing is switch from d minor to c major now if i were to use shape one this is what would happen for both keys this is my minor root on D, minor, D minor, F major. We don't have to worry about F major because we're dealing with D minor. But then we're dealing with C major. Now this is an example of adjusting the pentatonic to a chord without changing the key at all. What you do is changing the roots but not the key. Okay, because why? Because in the key of F major where all these chords are actually from, um, you can find a D minor pentatonic and a C major pentatonic. So I haven't changed the key because those scales are within the key. I've changed the roots. So uh, in any case, where was I? That was a sidebar. Oh yeah, if I go from D minor... Now we know that the A minor pentatonic is also C major, so we could use this shape at the fifth fret for the C major, and here's what I get. leap I had to make all right you don't want to do that on the guitar you want to stay as streamlined as possible without having to move your wrist so now if we use since we're dealing here with a C major chord what if I went up the different shapes till I got close to the D minor uh, and there's my C major there first shape second shape third shape now I could kind of effortlessly move between the two root set, uh, set of roots, uh, D minor and C major. D minor pentatonic, C major. D minor, C major. And that right there is the reason for learning parallel playing, okay? Um, and the exercise I gave you early to stay on the same fret, use all five shapes, determine the major and minor roots, eventually the stuff sinks in. Uh, a similar situation in a way um, uh, uh, happens with the song Little Wing by Jimi Hendrix. Um, the chords are E minor. G, A minor, E minor, B minor. Now, Jimmy, uh, except for the D chord, he pretty much stayed on the E minor pentatonic throughout this. So let's look at this for a second. We have shape one here at the 12th fret, and that's not the coziest place to play, so I'm gonna to move to shape four. One, two, three, four. And I'm gonna take that down an octave. So there's my E minor pentatonic. Bearing in, bearing in mind that E minor 
is G major. All right. Now what I'm going to do, instead of just playing E minor pentatonic throughout, I'm going to take each chord name and put the word pentatonic after each chord name. So A minor pentatonic, E minor pentatonic, G major pentatonic. And I'm going to switch uh, each pentatonic for the chord. All right, if that, hopefully that's making some sense. So here's my E minor. There's my G major, which is the same scale. Now I got A minor. E minor. E minor, shape one. I've got back to E minor. G major, which is the same scale. A minor. E minor. B minor. C major. G major. Oh, wait, C. Uh, sorry, G, F. All right, let's hold this so uh, it's moving too fast for me to describe. So that last section was G, F, C, D, and I'm moving my pentatonic per chord. So here's G, shape four. Why is this G? This is my minor root, this is my major root, E minor, G major. The next chord is F, all right? And I'm now using shape five because here's the major root of shape five. All right, here's the minor root of shape five, here's the major root, so. pentatonic and C major pentatonic are the same, so I took shape two from A minor pentatonic. And then finally D major is the same as B minor. I'm using shape one for that minor root, major root, there's D major. So that's how that works in terms of if you want to be a little more interesting than just playing the same pentatonic scale globally, you can employ this technique. The trick is you take the name of the chord, if it's a major chord, you stick the word pentatonic and find that pentatonic. If it's a minor uh, chord, you, you uh, put the word pentatonic after it, find that pentatonic. Now, I've discussed the song Blue Bossa before. Um, if you wanna, what I'm about to demonstrate, if you wanna practice how to do this, um, go to YouTube and type in um, Blue Bossa Jam Tracks, and they'll have a <clears throat> space for soloists to just practice their soloing over the song. Okay, now blue bassa happens to be cut into modular units. One unit from the key of C minor, another from the key of D flat major, then the third unit goes back to C minor and it revolves around that way. Now, this is my minor finger, this is my major finger. I'm on C, my minor finger is on C, so I have a C minor pentatonic appropriate for the first section, but I gotta get to a D flat major. If I use this shape to guide me, uh, this is my major finger. If I take this down to a D flat, shape one sits here for that section, and shape one sits here for the first section. Now granted, that's not a big leap to make. It's pretty easy to, to move from here to here. But just for the sake of practice purposes and to refine your understanding of all this, this is shape one in D flat major, and I want to get a shape somewhere close to my C minor. So I go up one to shape two in uh, B flat minor or D flat major, and here I'm in the neighborhood. By the way, this is why I call it neighborhood playing. You're trying to find a scale in the neighborhood to accommodate. So now, uh, let me try that. Uh, here we go with blue bass, uh, the C minor section first. Thank you. 
shape one in C minor. Now, th how this can become a really in-depth study is, well, I know I have five different shapes for C minor. One here, one here, one here. All the pentatonics have five different positions you could play them in. So what I'm going to do now is shape four of C minor, and in shape four, our minor root is here on the third fret, and uh, our major root is here on the sixth fret. That would be the key of C minor, E flat major. I'm going to use my C minor here. And now where would uh, D flat major be, okay? Me, I can make the adjustment lightning fast. It's right here. With a mistake, of course. But uh, shape five is always a whole step below shape one. So if this is D flat major in shape one, shape five will be here. And you notice they sound almost exactly the same. So now I'm going to do that one. comprehensive. Now, here's my C minor, the original uh, shape one. I'm going to go down a whole step to get C minor from uh, shape five. Right? And, um, uh, uh, sorry. Uh, oh, right, 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 of course. Alright, so there's my C minor. I go to shape one for D flat major. Now let's try that one now. So C minor using shape uh, shape five and shape one for D flat major. Let's do that again. So I stayed on uh, shape five. So this is C minor, shape five. Now I go to shape one for my D flat major. Back to sh uh, shape five. Now, in the cases I just described to you, we had Little Wing, uh, Sultans of Swing, and then Blue Bassa. What's the difference between, say, Sultans of Swing, Little Wing, and Blue Bassa in terms of the approach? In Blue Bassa, we have a dedicated key change. Uh, very often, a dedicated key change will be uh, preceded by a 2-5, which is exactly what we have. The 2 chord of the key of D flat major, the 5 chord of D flat major, and the 1 chord of D flat major. And it stays there for a bit, so you could say it's a dedicated modulation for that section. Um, whereas in um, Little Wing and uh, the Dire Straits, Sultans of Swing, those chords were all relative to the key. They, were, they all belonged to the key they were in, but what we did was we did a trick uh, employing a different pentatonic as the chord changes, which is perfectly allowable and sounds fine. And again, in my original analysis uh, uh, of the pentatonic shapes, I said, uh, well, actually not the pentatonic shape, my original uh, first video on pentatonic theory, I said that in every key you could find three different major pentatonics and their little sister minor accompanying minor pentatonics. Every key has three of them embedded within. All right, so if that's the case, um, it makes sense that in a song like Little Wing, I'll have a variety of, uh, of uh, pentatonic shapes, three different ones to use. Where Little Wing differs is that there is one chord that stands out, out of the key of E minor slash G major, which the song is in. It kind of kind of modulates between E minor G major. That happens a lot in music. Um, that's relative minor, relative major. 
but there is one chord that doesn't belong to the key. Yes, E minor belongs to that key, G belongs to that key, A minor belongs to that key, E minor, B minor belongs to that key, A minor, C belongs to that key, G, F does not belong to that key. That's from the G mixolydian mode, which is from the key of C. And then here we get the four or five of the key of G again. So for one moment, we're in the key of C major, which gave me a totally different shape to work with in the pentatonic thing. All right, so I hope all of this makes some kind of sense. It's a great study. You can do what I did with, say, blue bassa using all five shapes. In other words, I could start with my uh, C minor pentatonic here. I could start with my C minor pentatonic here. I could start with my C minor pentatonic here. I could start with my C minor pentatonic here. And I could start with my C minor pentatonic here, each time yielding me uh, another shape for the D flat major when it comes in. So again, how parallel practice works is you do the same shape on, the, on whatever fret you're starting on. So shape one is A minor, C major. Shape two is F sharp minor, A major. Shape three is E minor, G major. Shape four is D minor, F major. And shape five is D major, uh, B minor, D major. And because life, life just loves to screw with people, uh, just as I was about to close out in a graceful way, my camera ran out of space. I uh, have to buy a new SD card because it's just not large enough for my purposes here. Anyway, I hope uh, this stuff is making sense. Um, what we'll explore the next time, I said that uh, parallel playing, playing is important for uh, the major minor key system. And uh, there's a, minor, a slight problem with, the, uh, with uh, the secondary dominance that go to minor chords. I'll explain that. And I'll explain how you could work with pentatonics anyway uh, uh, in order to get that going. Um, I'm going to come back to parallel relative pentatonic playing in the future when we talk about the blues, but I need to do my whole blues section for that. But we're, uh, parallel is going to figure very importantly if you want to advance your uh, navigation skills in the blues tradition. Okay, uh, so that'll be it for today. Like I said, I'm, I'm kind of on a roll. Things are slow, so I figured let me knock out a few vids for folks. And I hope you all are enjoying this. I know it's uh, very guitar specific, so I'm sorry for the other uh, instrumental players. However, there is some theory in here that does translate at least across to other instruments. Lucky for the other instruments, they play the pentatonic scale in one position and they don't have to change shapes or anything like that. Guitars have a little bit harder and that's why guitarists are known for not knowing music theory very well because it is indeed a clusterfuck to understand on guitar. Lucky for me, I learned how to play piano when I was 17 and I studied it like mad. Um, not so much the piano, but what the piano was showing me in terms of how the structure of our system works and it's what uh, gave me some of the new uh, uh, perspectives that I give about music theory. They may not seem like new or radical to you, but when you compare it to what the academics teach, it's the same old stuff they just throw out over and over again without any new information. Uh, so that's part of the reason I'm here is to supplement what the academics uh, gave musicians regarding improv, composition, and analysis. Okay, that'll be it for me today. I uh, hope you have a good one. Probably won't see another video for a, a bit of time. I'm still finalizing my record. I've got a friend coming into town, so I'm going to be a little busy. So I hope uh, this is enough to chew on for the time that I'll be away. Okay, thanks again, and have a great one. Bye-bye.